every so often, a story comes along which is completely out of left field. It's unlike anything you've ever seen before, and there's really no way of introducing it because there's nothing to compare it to. Now, tonight's story is definitely one of those. Um, whatever you might be thinking from the title, I guarantee you are completely wrong. Now, this is weird beyond belief. So, please approach this with suspension of disbelief and give it a go. Because it might be a multi-parter, there might be more to come in the future. So, another one from Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so I could read your stories for you all. So, it's time to sit back and relax with your favourite drink and listen. Well, I guess starting off at the place I'm at now is a better beginning than not having one at all. So here we go. I'm a 25-year-old, average, university let down male, living in the state of Illinois with my two cats and my brood of a German shepherd. I'd say that uh, I've been living life pretty okay. I'm not in any danger. My life isn't in jeopardy or anything like that. But I guess I'm here to talk about the more than strange occurrences at my previous job. A rest stop just along the endless roads of Illinois, and the reasons why I left. Well, I can already tell that these posts are going to come in parts. Let's just say all of the crazy shit that happened can't exactly fit into one little entry. It's not that the crap that happened was, well, scary. I mean, even if it was, I just didn't notice it. But that it's just so surreal sometimes. I fail to forget that after working there for five years, what went down on a regular basis wasn't at all normal. I began working at one of those off-branded company rest stops most folks use on their travels. Unfortunately, no. Not the big flashy ones with the Wi-Fi and the 16 damn different fast food booths that people can enjoy their time with, but no. One of those okay-looking ones that were just big enough to be called legitimate. But man, you would not believe the rude stares I got when I had to tell angry parents that no, we do not have Wi-Fi for your screaming two-year-old in your back seat so that he could play his iPad games or whatever. How the hell do they think I felt sitting there on my shifts half the time? So first day I stepped foot into the interview office, it was hot and stuffy. The man behind the desk was robust, with a receding hairline, sweat dotted against his forehead. He was muttering something about how he kept losing the night shift employees when I introduced myself. Honestly, maybe it was the desperation in his voice, or just the fact I was burning in debt at the ripe age of twenty. But, well, I took the job as a Rest area attendant. Before that, I didn't even know that there was such a job. My work started that night. Simple training and a pat on the back was what I was given before my new boss hurried into his shitty little Camaro and drove off without heeding the stop sign. If I'm being honest, I was glad he was gone too. Not that he was rude or anything, but the way he jittered with his eyes darting around made me think he was on crack or something like that. The first few nights working there, nothing special really happened. The usual odd truckers and things like that, but well, it was to be expected. It's when I met Cardell that set off the events that would occur over the next five years of me working there. Cardell seemingly popped out of fuck nowhere, and nearly sent me flying onto my damn ass when he popped up over the counter with a, huh, Milo, right? The way his green eyes flared made me damn near shit myself. Whoa, what the hell, dude? I probably yelled that twice as loud as his initial greeting. My main concern wasn't even the fact that the man knew my name. It was that I didn't even hear him come in. Not through the doors, not through the back. Literally, out of freaking nowhere. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? My question was met with an awkward laugh. Think of that scrawny kid in junior high that shivered in the corner kind of laugh. Oh, sorry. My name's Cardell. I'm your co-worker, remember? Remember? What the fuck are you talking about? He seemed as confused as I was when I retorted. 
Lifting his red cap, a mess of long black hair fell out, which he scratched at before tying it back. Look, dude, never mind that. Just, how did you come in here? I didn't hear you at all. The floor. The what now? I said that I came through the floor. Cardell eyed me with a puppy-looking grin. It was a type of grin that was just so genuinely innocent that I felt like I was talking to a five-year-old. Come again? You know, the floor. No, I don't know. The floor! Cardell stamped on the brash white tiles, flinging his index finger to the ground as if I were the idiot here. I know what a floor is. I'm asking how the hell you... You can't even come in through the floor. Sure you can. The powder man downstairs hoists you up when you get stuck in the sinkhole tunnels out back. Sometimes he's asleep, though, so I've been down there for days. He said all this with a knowing expression, waving his hands around as if this was complete common sense to anybody. My face must have said something about my dumbfounded state as he sighed, shifting his red cap back onto his head. Oh, did boss not tell you? He looked sad for a moment, as though he was my father and I'd just pulled the dumbest stunt of my life right in front of him. <sighs> There's sinkhole tunnels out back that send you straight down. We don't really know where straight down, but you just go straight down. <laughs> You're lucky if the powder man is awake then, so he can just hoist you up and you're back to work. Cardell nonchalantly took a seat across from me, patting the radiator behind him. Um, right. Uh, besides the powwow man. Powder man. Uh, right. The powder man. Uh, how did you know my name? Cardell grinned at my question, his drumming on the radiator stopping. Oh. Sorry. Now, Phoebe told me. Who the fuck is Phoebe? Oh, the lady in the men's washroom. Cardell turned around in his chair, humming to himself like that was an obvious statement. At this point, I just thought my co-worker was plain fucking nuts. Each day he'd tell me something absolutely batshit like, Oh, don't mind the black deer army that marches around, or remember to leave out a can of Sprite for Ricky. Uh, that's the radio host who apparently lives in the large storage closet, but, according to Cardell, he's hard to catch, hence why he uses a can of freaking Sprite. And I thought all of it was a bunch of crazy bullshit, until my third week working there, when a frantic father came in with his teenage son, ringing for assistance. I remember the sheer stress in the father's voice, as he recounted to me that there was a naked woman with long, pale blonde hair down to her feet and glowing blue eyes inside of the men's washroom. I think it took about a minute of laughter to realize that he and his son were dead serious, and I sheepishly told them I'd go check it out. Cardell had lifted his cap from his face, green eyes glinting with that complimentary doggy smile he carried as he hopped to his feet. Oh, that must be Phoebe. The kid was out the front doors before I could even muster out a word about the obscenity of it all. If there was ever a day that I was so royally fucked into disbelief, I think that day was the winner. I chased Cardell all the way to the men's washroom, trying to grab a hold of that long-legged idiot before my eyes landed on a delicate-looking figure dwindling over the sinks. Cardell's face morphed into one of childish puppy love, as he shied back a bit in his movements while looking at her. Oh, uh, hey, Phoebe. He beamed out with red, creeping up his ears. Phoebe crawled onto the ceiling, earning a jaw drop from me. Cardell, what the fuck? Shh, you'll scare her. He snapped at me suddenly before he lifted his arms to the figure dangling above him. The woman, or Phoebe, smiled gently as she practically flowed into his arms, a soft purr emanating from her throat. Cardell looked content as he turned to me, a mess of blonde hair caught in his arms along with her. Wanna pet her? he whispered, 
smiling with unadulterated joy. At that moment, my head was fucking barreling. If Phoebe was real, then either Cardell was telling the truth all along, or I had just gone nuts myself. Do I... No, I don't want to pet her. What the hell's wrong with you? I grouched as she turned her rosy-cheeked face towards me. Her lips were puffy, and I thought for a moment that she was just about the prettiest girl that I'd ever seen. Until I realized she couldn't possibly be human. Can someone please explain this to me at all? I groaned. Well, it'd be another three months before any of my questions went answered at all, with the simple one that Cardell gave me that night. No, it's just the Illinois rest stop, Milo. And with that, he nuzzled Phoebe's hair and set her off into the air. She disappeared along with any of my rational beliefs. After the Phoebe incident, I forced myself to take a few hours out of my sleeping schedule during the day hours to drag myself back to the rest stop to question the day star. Along with Greg and Marty, there was Darla, who was the only one who didn't all of a sudden walk out back, yell, Oh, shit and go slipping down into the fucking abyss that is the outback. They appeared about two hours later, getting up from the floor of the main front, just like how I met Cardell the first time. So, you're the new kid, huh? Darla had a thick accent of some sort, so I couldn't really tell what, and didn't ask. Yeah, that's me. Apparently there's weird shit that goes on around here. Have you met Phoebe? Man's washroom lady? I think Cardell's got the hoss for her. I snorted, leaning back in the chair as Greg came in muttering. Cardell's the only guy Phoebe will touch. Marty said she's seen her kiss him one time, too. She did, Marty caught from the back. I could see her dusting off her pants, her green nails almost tearing right through them with the force that she was patting them with. Greg rolled his eyes. Mop in hand, he jerked it backwards towards Darla. Dar over there knows the most. She's been here the longest after Cardell, though we don't really know where Cardell even came from. Hell, you mean you don't know where he came from? I sat straight, eyeing Greg. It means what it means. We literally don't know where he came from. You're saying he just popped out of nowhere. Bingo! Darla slammed the counter with her hand, snapping with a finger gun right after she did so. Not like our boss is complaining, though. It's only you and Cardell at the night shift, and he doesn't even have to pay Cardell. Marty came up, finally, leaning on Greg with a sigh. You only know the tip of the iceberg, Milo. That whole day consisted of me not getting any sleep until my shift came, and Darla was the last one packing up to leave. Cardell tipped his cap to her as he came in, through the door this time. Oh, I forgot to add. Darla turned round, hand on the frame of the open door. Cardell? Ricky the host wanted you to leave Milo out for him this time, instead of a sprite. Forgot to tell you that. Well... Since I'm an asshole, and it's late as shit here, I'm ending this post right now. Don't worry, I know half of you won't believe me, so I can leave my tails here in parts and get it off my chest. Well, I'll see you guys in my next post. And, for the love of God, just don't pass Illinois State Rest Stop. So, Hello again to everyone who read my last post, or just somehow stumbled upon this one. The last note that I ended on might have left some of you understandably baffled before my less than courteous goodbye on that post. Well, there's no use just dilly-dallying around, so I should get right back into it. Now, if I'm remembering correctly... The last thing I wrote about was when Darla mentioned to Cardell that the oh-so-mysterious Ricky the host wanted me in place of his usual sprite as an offering. Now, 
I'm sure that any sane person would automatically freak out, maybe put up a fight, or just straight up walk right out and quit on the spot. But you see, I own the title of Curiosity Killed the Cat, because from what I'd been exposed to already in this damn restaurant, wasn't really satisfying any of the questions that I had nonetheless. Hell, if this was the only way to get answers, I was sure as hell about to get them. Cardell looked me up and down for a few moments before glancing back to Darla, who was swinging her keys around in her right hand, leaning across the half-open exit with an unamused look on her face. Are you sure he said Milo? Of course I'm sure, Darla snapped. What do I look like to you, stupid? She snarled almost cockily, but paused and took a gentle look towards me. For a second, it seemed that she had a faint smile directed at me before it returned to her normal, tired expression. <laughs> Good luck out there, Milo. And with that, she pushed the doors the rest of the way open and left without another word. Cardell and I stood there in a moment of silence together before he turned to me, holding his hands behind his back as he rocked back and forth on his heels for a minute and grinned. You know, it's weird for Ricky to ask for anything more than a can of Sprite. It's also weird for him to ask to see anyone else but Darla. The hell does any of that even mean, Cardell? I eyed him suspiciously, making my way around the counter to where I picked up a Snickers bar. Well, most things around here take a liking to a specific worker, like Ricky the host, or, or Phoebe, the Ula with Greg, and the various Duras that seem to be absolutely worshipping Marty. Cardell seemed to take a pause and observe my movements as I went to unravel the chocolate bar when he grabbed my hand in mid-tear of the wrapper. I couldn't even finish my thought of what the hell even is the Ula or the Duras when the classic, what in the fuck are you doing, you shithead, popped out of my mouth. Cardell looked at me sheepishly. Red cap tilted to the side as a lock of his hair had slipped out from beneath it. That ain't no Snickers bar, Milo. He spoke softly but gruffly. Oh, what in the seven hells are you talking about? That's one of the Duras. He let go to reveal a small creature, brown, that was speckled with golden dots down to two stubby thick arms. Its hands were flat and were really just fingers attached to a plastered surface on its arm. Two stout legs accompanied the pot-bellied creature, with its two black, white eyes and tiny mouth. I'm sure that I would have normally cooed, when in fact this time I damn near took Cardell's and this thing's poor ears off, if it had any that was, with how loud I completely lost my shit. That little gremlin, or rather Dura, replicated my exact face of terror, and cried for its brethren, I assumed, as many more teeny creatures crawled from various cans, and from in between magazines and even the godforsaken mop. They emerged until they were all packed together around my feet, staring up with eyes that looked like they threatened to spill tears. My eyes shot to Cardell for help, but I was met with an expression that matched those of the Duras. Cardell, what are you just standing there for? Do you like scaring things here, Milo? His statement really caught me off guard. The man literally acted as if waltzing into a land full of the frickin' insane occurrences was the most normal thing on this godforsaken planet. And I was the one scaring things? Truth be told, though, he was right. I really wasn't scared. Just bewildered. I'd probably scare the living shit out of these poor things. I glanced down watching at the Dura shiver in my hand. It seemed completely harmless as I set it down onto the counter. It quivered for a few more seconds before beginning to waddle towards its kind. It didn't take more than a damn second of me blinking for those critters to have freaking vanished and Cardell to be leaning so far across the counter I thought he was going to kiss me. Shit. <laughs> Dude, don't do that. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? <sighs> What the fuck are you talking about this time? I dropped back in the chair, sighing, 
as Cardell peeled backwards, humming a tune to himself before clapping his hands together. Oh, never mind that. I have to get you ready for Ricky, right? What is this? A date? I grumbled, before Cardell damn near ripped my ligament straight from my socket as he dragged me towards a certain corner. Cardell paused, tussled up my hair a bit, and smacked my cheeks like an overjoyed aunt or uncle, trying to give you some, as they like to call it, colour to your cheeks. He cupped his own face and sighed with a dreamy tone. Ricky is super polite, so make sure you're nice back to him, okay? He nodded to himself and whirled around on his heel. Hey, wait, Cardell, I managed out. He turned around halfway, cocking his head a bit and raising a brow. Hmm? I took a second, understanding slowly just what I was getting myself into. What? What exactly happens to the sprite cans with Ricky? My question seemed to intrigue his thought process for a moment or two, before he beamed, sticking out a thumbs up as he yelled, <laughs> They just go missing. All I saw next was a man with about six different microphones tied around his body, heading for me at full speed. My time with Ricky from his pleasant greeting was more fucked up than I could have imagined. If you're waiting for some story of how Ricky's a psychopathic serial killer, and we had some showdown in which I was victorious and justice was served, or I nearly escaped death or some shit, well, stop listening right now. I don't think Ricky was even human, but hell, was anything except Cardell and I human in that rest stop that, or any other night? Hell, I don't know if I could even count Cardell as human, with how little he seemed to notice that there was anything even remotely wrong with this place. Ricky somehow pulled me into a back entrance that I didn't know existed, before a pale bulb turned on, and I recognized this to be the infamous Do Not Open Storage Closet. To say the least, the normal looking atmosphere inside this ridiculous fuckery of a job caught me off guard the most. Sure, Ricky the radio show host might have been wrapped up in microphones like a Christmas tree would be with lights, but the rest was unusually normal. I took my time looking around like a godforsaken crackhead, trying not to act suspicious, before I noticed Ricky was staring right at me. Other than his ungodly attack of a hello, I hadn't stolen so much as a glance at him. Ricky's face was oddly attractive, with an intense stare. I almost wondered how Dala could ignore him so easily if she, and now I, were the only ones that ever saw him up close. The only thing that was really off about him well, other than the microphones, of course, was how the colour of his eyes took up the entirety of it. Like, the whole thing. No whites, no pupils. Just a stark, bright yellow. It was nuts. I, uh, well, hiya, Ricky. I sheepishly mumbled out, fairly unsure if I should have introduced myself with a Hey there, Ricky the host. But, quite honestly... I was way too brutally weirded out to even concentrate on forming a proper greeting. Ricky leaned forward. His eyes seemed to pulse like goddamn spider eggs. It was gross. Beyond disgusting. Hell, I had half the mind to walk out of there and grab him a pair of damn sunglasses when he said two things. Like Darla, huh? Ricky grinned as he leaned away from me absently swinging one of his microphones like a freaking weapon. I said, do you like Darla? Ricky's question baffled me, but the part that followed after weirded me out furthermore. The man licked me. That's right. He stuck out his freakishly long tongue and licked me. And that did it. Maybe it wasn't at all fucked up to you listeners, but... I sure as hell think that grabbing someone's face with your big-ass hands and licking their entire face with your fucking reptilian tongue is pretty freaking outrageous. I'd backed up so fast, I slammed my head against the brick wall, and with a, oh, fuck, about three stumbles to the doorway, and a sad attempt at throwing it open dramatically, I paused, and with one last look over to Ricky. Oh, and Rick's, the man or 
creature rather, focused his attention on me with perplexed brows. I like Dick, thank you very much. After my initial encounter with the infamous Ricky the host, Darla began leaving a few minutes later each night before either I or Cardell showed up. It was odd quirks at first when she watched me before she smiled, said her goodbye and left. Naturally, me being the way I am, I really didn't give a shit. That was until one day when I walked in, groggy as shit, and damn near ate shit when my right foot sank into one of the freaking tiles. Oh, now, what the, what the shit? My cries echoed through the building as Darla and Cardell glanced over, at one another, and then back at me again as my foot began to sink further in. Good fuck. God, don't just stand there, goddammit. I may be immune to most things, but I am not going six feet underground to a shitty Illinois rest stop. I remember looking back at the damn thing, deciding to devour my damn foot up to the ankle, and to see a single square tile that I'd stepped on that was oddly discolored from the rest I clearly hadn't ever noticed before. Has that always been like that? Dala mused, red fingernails pulling back her hair, as she oogled myself at the apparent man-eating floor. Has what always been like what? Gardet lifted his cap, squinting from me to the tile. This tile? It's filthy. I mean, look at it. She gestured to the tile I was currently, and very unhappily, now sinking into. Cardell frowned slightly, lifting his cap up once again to rearrange his hair, and pulling it back down. Oh, yeah. It has? She chirped, almost looking pleasantly amused. Um, hello? Guy sinking into buttfuck nowhere, remember? I piped in getting more irritated than anything that these two baboons were doing absolutely nothing to help but chitter-chattering away. Cardell frowned slightly. Milo, buddy, you're standing in the Dura's killing ground. That's why you're sinking. He sighed, that disappointed dad look crossing his face, as if I was supposed to know all of this naturally. I literally beg your freaking pardon, Cardell. My tone was flat as I stared at him. He didn't do anything more but point to the tile I was being taken by, and with a hand on my shoulder, gently and very seriously, he said, They sacrifice Maverick every week. It's their killing ground, Milo. So what? They find some poor schmuck named Maverick and kill him? I'm not Maverick. No, it's just Maverick. Yeah, like the name. I rolled my eyes. No, Cardell shook his head. It's Maverick. How do I get out of this? I grunted as I tried to pull my leg free without any success. Cardell shrugged a bit. <laughs> Phoebe usually sings to them and they listen. But, well, she's not here right now. Um, can't you, like, summon her or something? Cardell frowned at that. Oh, I would never disturb her sleep. You mean from the men's bathroom? Bingo! You're freaking nuts. I huffed out gruffly before Cardell shifted his hat to the side. Well, we could always ask Ricky. He glanced at Darla, who pursed her lips. I don't know about that champ. Head ass over here thought it'd be dandy to be rude to him. Oh, he's pretty upset right now. Look, I'll apologize if you can get me out. No can do, pal. Darla let her hair drop, peering at me from behind the curtain of her locks. You've probably got about an hour or so before they realize you aren't Maverick. She spoke in a disconcerted tone. Our only chance is to find Maverick then. Cardell frowned yet again. But it isn't feeding time yet. He seemed distressed for once as he spoke, but took a deep breath and shrugged at last. Okay, Darla. Stay here with Milo. I'll go find Maverick, or Mrs. S. I didn't even get a chance that day to ask Cardell who the hell Mrs. S was, before it was just Darla, crouching in front of me, and I, sinking into the apparent pits of hell. So, who the hell is Maverick? 
It'd be another few weeks until I understood the meaning of Maverick. Well, unfortunately, I've run out of time for today. So I'll continue next time when I'm back. Leave anything you want to ask in the comments. I'm always open to questions about this all. Or, literally, just my sanity at this point. Well, until next time. Well, I think you can probably agree that's one of the weirdest stories that I have ever read, and it may well turn into a multi-parter, so let me know what you thought, because I'm going to read the rest of it at some point in the future. <laughs> so beware, I will give you plenty of warning. Anyway, the new year is nearly upon us, but I can think I can squeeze another story in for you on Monday. Sound like a good idea? I hope so, because I will be back, and I hope you will all join me. Until then... You have a fantastic weekend, sweet dreams, and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>